Pat Fitzgerald led Northwestern football to heights that many never thought were possible there. He consistently won, seemingly had a great culture, and was always a threat to shock the college football world. He did more with less, but right now the biggest story in college football is the situation that has been developing at Northwestern over the last few weeks, and I guess months. Allegedly, Pat Fitzgerald had a culture that was full of hazing, and most recently, a former player came forward and talked about what went on behind the scenes. In today's video, I want to bring you up to speed on what the heck is going on with Northwestern football, talk about the situation, my thoughts on the matter, and then overall, just the rise and fall of Pat Fitzgerald and his fall from grace. Just a little while ago, he was named a candidate for NFL head coaching gigs, and now he has been fired. In today's video, we're going to talk about his rise and fall, the situation, and everything going on. Before we get started, quickly be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you're new and love college football content, and let me know your thoughts down below. Now, let's get started. Going back in time, Pat Fitzgerald was born in the Chicago suburbs and eventually went on to play for the Northwestern Wildcats. He became a consensus All-American in the mid-90s for them and would go down as one of the most beloved players in Northwestern history. During his playing career, he was twice named the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year, was a two-time All-American, and won the Nagurski and Benarik Award. Unfortunately, he did not end up getting drafted, but did sign as a free agent with the Dallas Cowboys, and he would only end up playing two preseason games for them. Pretty quickly, he decided to go into coaching, as in 1998, he became a graduate assistant at Maryland, and then a year later, went over to Colorado for the same role. In 2000, he took the linebacker's job with Idaho before he would return to Northwestern and finish out his coaching career. He was hired as a defensive backs coach in 2001, and then from 2002 to 2003, he was promoted to linebacker's coach. In 2004, he was also given the title of recruiting coordinator and was quickly climbing up the coaching ladder. Northwestern football has always struggled, and a tragedy would turn into the best thing that would ever happen to the program. Unfortunately, head coach Randy Walker would pass away in June of 2006, leading the administration to eventually promote Pat to head coach. In his first year, he would struggle mightily, going 4-8 with a 2-6 record in the Big Ten. But just two years later, the Wildcats had gone 9-3. He was named the Big Ten Coach of the Year after the 2008 season, and the next two years were pretty good for Northwestern. They had two ginormous wins over Iowa and had a thrilling New Year's Day bowl game against Auburn. Northwestern was continuously overachieving, and after a 6-11 record in 2011, he would have his first 10-win season, which included getting Northwestern ranked in a win in the Gator Bowl. After that, he'd have back-to-back 5-7 -back seasons in 2013 and 2014, before he'd then have his most successful stretch. In 2015, the Wildcats went 10-3 and, and ended up playing in the Outback Bowl. This next era was defined by players such as Clayton Thorson and running back Justin Jackson, but the best was still yet to come. In 2017, the Cats went 10-3 and, and ended up winning the Music City Bowl. 2018 ended up becoming their big break, as led by their senior quarterback in Thorson, they would go 9-5 and, and win the Big Ten West. This was a ginormous deal for them, and while they obviously wouldn't win the Big Ten Championship, they would go to the Holiday Bowl and win that game. 2019 was unfortunately extremely disappointing, as their big-time transfer quarterback Hunter Johnson did not pan out, and the team went 3-9 and with a 1-8 and record in the Big Ten. 2020, though, would once again be a shocker. Led by Indiana transfer quarterback Peyton Ramsey and true freshman running back Cam Porter, Northwestern ended up going 7-2, won the Big Ten West, gave Ohio State a fight in the Big Ten Championship, and got to their highest rank in the Fitzgerald era at number 10. Despite it being a weird year, this was the height of Northwestern football, and it looked like things were in great shape for them. Unfortunately, this is where the downfall begins. The joke over the last few years is that after a good season, Northwestern was going to be awful, and after an awful season, they were going to be good. I mean, I guess that made some sense, but that trend predicted their awful 2021 season. They ended up bringing in transfer quarterback Ryan Holinsky from South Carolina, but he couldn't get anything done, and Hunter Johnson couldn't get anything done either. The lone bright spot on the entire team was their 1,000-yard rusher in Evan Hull, and their three wins came over Indiana State, Ohio, and Rutgers. Not exactly wins you want to hang your hat on, and for the most part, they were blown out in every single other game. They did almost upset number 22 Iowa, and also only lost by a touchdown against Duke, but overall, it was a disastrous season for Northwestern, but with the success of the 2020 season, they were of course going to give them another chance. In 2022, they had returned the entire coaching staff, and after giving Ryan Holinsky a year to develop, many expected Northwestern to at least be a little bit better. In Week 0, they'd play against Nebraska and Ireland, and after looking lost early, Northwestern figured it out in the second half 
and upset Nebraska 31-28. Honestly, Nebraska got more trash for this than the Northwestern got credit, but it did look like it was going to be a somewhat successful season, and maybe Northwestern was going to have their bounce back year. Unfortunately, that would not happen. In week two, they'd play Duke, and after a tragic fumble through the end zone, they lost that game. This would send them into a complete downward spiral, as they'd lose to Southern Illinois at home, an FCS school, and then lose by three against Miami of Ohio. The team was now one and three, and it would only get worse from there. They got beat by Penn State, got blown out by Wisconsin, lost to Maryland, lost to Iowa, got blown out by Ohio State, got blown out by Minnesota, lost a heartbreaker to Purdue, and then got beat bad by Illinois. All in all, Northwestern went 1-11, four wins in two years, and consecutive last place finishes in the Big Ten West. That is not what Northwestern fans were accustomed to, but by no means was Pat going to be on the hot seat. He had won so much and done so much for them that there was no way they were going to fire him unless he did it again in 2023. We are never going to get a chance to see what would happen, as he has now been fired. Fitzgerald is one of the most prominent athletes and coaches in the history of Northwestern athletics, and in his 17 years, he went 110 and 101 with 10 bowl appearances and two Big Ten West championships. His downfall really began in December of 2022, after they began investigating hazing allegations coming from a random whistleblower. Northwestern would apparently acknowledge this in January, and it was completed this summer. The results were released on July 7th, and it proved to be devastating for the football program and Coach Fitz. The former player said, quote, Fitz absolutely knew about the hazing in this program. He absolutely failed by not intervening, and he knew, and he should have made it stop. If he truly did not know, he should not be the head coach. Either way, he should not be the head man because he is not monitoring and protecting the safety and well-being of the student-athletes. That is what the former player allegedly said, and this was sent to the Northwestern student newspaper. The former player told ESPN that the hazing was organized and widespread in Northwestern's program, and it led a group of older players called, quote, the Shrek Gang to lead the hazing activity, which included a lot of running, and I guess another topic I'm not going to touch on on this channel. After that, Fitz came out and said he had no knowledge of the hazing, and many Northwestern players released a statement supporting Fitz. Apparently, they said that the accusations were exaggerated and twisted, and Fitz said, quote, Although I was not aware of the alleged incidents, I have spoken to university officials, and they informed me of a two-week suspension, effective immediately. At the time, many rolled their eyes at only giving a two-week suspension, but in my opinion, it's better to be safe than sorry punishment as more details come out. I guess that would happen pretty quickly, as there was a national outcry, and tonight, he was fired. Many are going to assume that Fitzgerald is completely in the wrong, was a complete mess, and that this stuff is absolutely horrible. If it is true, then yes, but there was also a twist in the case that not many people were talking about. A current Northwestern player who asked to remain anonymous told ESPN this on Sunday. Quote, That former player had a detailed plan with a sole objective to take down Coach Fitzgerald. He said the player said, quote, He just kept emphasizing, yeah, it'll be okay, and I'm just trying to get Coach Fitz fired. I don't think he ever acknowledged what he's saying is not true, and it was just like, I might embellish or exaggerate to get Coach fired. He said his sole goal was to see Coach Fitz rot in jail. You can look at the ESPN article if you don't believe me. So some are wondering if this is personal, and if a couple of isolated incidents were extremely exaggerated, so it'd create a national outcry and get Coach fired. Either way, I'm going to meet in the middle, in my opinion. Was it probably exaggerated to a degree? Yes. Was there something that went on and probably deserved him getting in trouble? Yes, as well. Seemingly, there were things that went on behind the scenes, and overall, the culture wasn't good anyways. They only won four games in two years, and at this point, Northwestern might have been looking for an excuse to fire him anyways. In college football, if you don't win, your leash is short, and especially if you have an incident like this or a culture like this, you're going to get kicked out of the door pretty quickly. In the investigation launched by the school itself, the claims against the program were apparently largely supported by evidence, so at the end of the day, that is what we have to work with. It looks like there was a bad culture and at least multiple incidents where things went way too far, and that is ultimately what Coach Fitzgerald is probably going to be remembered for. Whether he deserves it or not, no one's going to remember all the bowl games, the Big Ten championships, or how remarkable it was. They may just remember this. Off the field actions aside, Fitzgerald was a tremendous coach for Northwestern, who for the most part made them competitive, developed a lot of good players, and had a lot of exciting games. Northwestern is trying to put more money into the program, and this could be an opportunity for them to get a more high profile coach, create a bigger NIL fund, and maybe take the next step of the program. Either way, I don't know what is going to happen, and I want to emphasize that what I'm sharing today is just details that you can find in articles, and I don't know the full truth, so if anything I say is eventually wrong, I apologize in advance. 
Overall, I feel bad for everyone in the situation, and I hope Coach Fitzgerald ultimately learns from this and gets another chance. We should all preach forgiveness, and we'll probably never know what truly went on. Either way, it's sad, and I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and if you did, be sure to leave a like, let me know your thoughts down below, and check out all my other videos on the end screen, including my video about the tragic downfall of Scott Frost. Hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.